Hello everyone. Um, today we are going to review some mathematical notions that you most probably already know from your uh, previous math courses. So the purpose is not to uh, teach you something new. You may or may not, uh, but the, the, the purpose is not introduce you something new. The purpose is to review what you have already learned um, in case you uh, forgotten them. Well, um, so first we are going to talk about some basics and later I am going to uh, talk about some uh, optimization theory. All right, so the basic definitions. Well, most of the times we're going to use um, this uh, sign equal to, although x and y are not numbers, uh, we are going to say x is equal to y. For example, in game theory, we say um, uh, action x or strategy s is equal to strategy y. That basically means that they are the same thing. All right. And also there is this uh, sign equivalent to, um, which basically means the truth value of these two statements are the same. We usually use equivalence when we define a new concept. As you may remember, uh, a finite sum from 1 to n, x sub i, is basically uh, the summation of n terms. And a cross product of um, n sets, i from 1 to n, Sometimes it's also written as pi i from 1 to n s sub i, which is uh, a cross product of n sets. I will later uh, also talk about what we mean by cross product. All right. In logic, we unfortunately didn't have enough time to talk about them, but uh, in, in, in our advanced courses, we are going to use those uh, notations a lot. For all, this is what it means, for all, and sometimes for every, all right, depending on the con uh, uh, context, and um, there exist. All right. So there exists and for all. So these are two concepts um, that we oftentimes use. And just one example for all or for every chair, there exists a student, right? Sort of more um, uh, formal way is for every chair, there exists a student, all right? Another way, or not another way, I'm sorry, uh, somewhat related to this sentence is there exists a chair for all students. All right, so in, in words, how do I write that? Uh, there exists a chair for every student. All right, so be careful when you put um, for all and there exists, it may make so like the chair is the first and then the student is second. But you know, when you replace for all and there exists, the, the, the meaning uh, will generally uh, is going to change significantly. So here in this case, for every chair in the classroom, there exists a student. All right. So what does that mean? That means uh, suppose there is a full room of uh, chairs. All right. And then, you know, some number of students are waiting outside. So what, when I say something like this, for every chair in this room, there is a student waiting outside. So probably the number of students uh, waiting outside is bigger than the number of chairs available in the room. So the room is going to be full and some students may actually 
uh, be left outside of the room. They, they may not be able to sit. The second sentence, on the other hand, uh, means there exists a chair for every student. All right. So uh, again, the students are waiting outside. But the thing is, there's enough uh, chairs in this classroom so that we will not leave anybody left outside of the room. All right. So no student will be left outside of this classroom. So there's enough of chair, maybe potentially uh, a bigger number of chairs than the number of students. So here, the number of students will pr is probably higher than the number of chairs. Here, the opposite is true. The number of chair is probably higher than the number of students available. So no student is going to be left outside of this room. So um, the location of this uh, two terms is, is, is important. All right. Um, sometimes we use uh, there exist not, all right, or there doesn't exist. So it's sort of the negation of there exists. Um, and the, these terms, all right, this, this term, I'm sorry, usually means such that, and I will use it uh, in, 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 a, in a moment. Okay? All right. So let's now talk about sets. So as we know, a set is a collection of elements and elements can be anything. It doesn't have to be number. All right. It can be, the elements can be completely abstract objects. All right, so when I write something like this, x1 dot 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 xn, so basically this is a set which contains elements x1, x2, all the way up to xn. So as you know, when I say x element of x, it means x is a member of this set. And when I say x is not an element of x, that means X is not a member of this set, all right? So X is outside of this set. So here's an important uh, uh, um, uh, a way of defining a set. And we're going to use this in our uh, advanced level courses a lot. So X is in some X. So X is capital X is the set of uh, uh, some set such that statement about x. So this is a set. It's a description of a set. It basically denotes all the elements of capital X for which satisfies this statement about x, whatever this statement is. All right. So that's very, very important. We use this uh, no, uh, definition a lot. All right. And in fact, now I am going to give you some examples where we also describe the set of numbers. All right. So subsets of real numbers. You probably remember that we have uh, natural numbers starting from one and then two, three, four, five goes to infinity. Um, and then sort of a, a richer set of uh, numbers, integers starting from negative infinity, um, minus two, minus uh, one, zero, one, two, three, all the way up to positive infinity. And then we have an even richer set of numbers which we call rational numbers. And then finally, we have the richest uh, set of numbers, which we call real numbers. So the real numbers, uh, the set of reals is, is, is bigger than the set of rationals uh, because it contains uh, what we call irrational numbers. Um, most of the times in, you know, the, in, in high school, for example, you say that's it, that there's no other number other than uh, 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 reals, 
Uh, but the thing is, there's also what we call complex numbers. For example, square root of minus 2 is, is, is a complex number. It's not a real number. It's a complex number. But, uh, well, I mean, in economics, we don't really use complex numbers at all, um, as far as I know, at least. So therefore, I'm going to skip uh, that set. But so how do we write? So it's just a matter of notation. And so my purpose is to uh, give you these basic notations. So this is R, but sort of a different R. Uh, it's, it denotes the set of real numbers. And we denote it as an open interval from minus infinity to plus infinity. Infinity is not a number, all right? Um, so we're going to use this notation R minus. This is basically a set of non-positive uh, real numbers. So it is basically minus infinity to zero. Uh, so minus infinity is not included because it's not a number, but zero is included. Equivalently, we can write it x is a real number such that x is less than or equal to zero. All right. So all non-positive reals. All right. We can't say this is a set of uh, negative real numbers because zero is not negative. It's not positive either. All right. So we call it non-positive numbers. And symmetrically, this is set of all uh, set of uh, non-negative uh, real numbers. So it's basically starting from zero all the way to positive infinity. We usually do not put positive, but as you wish. And you can write this set as x is a real number such that x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so this is non-negative. This is non-positive. All right. Also, we use this set a lot. So we have not just one plus, but double plus, R plus plus. This is set of positive reals. So it's basically zero infinity open interval. So it's X, a real number such that statement about X, X is strictly greater than zero, all right? So uh, zero is not in the set. So this is positive reals. So non-negative reals, non-positive reals. All right. So for any um, real number A and B, all right, positive, negative, I don't know, um, such that A is less than B, strictly less than B, we define this as a closed interval. And here are the starting point and ending point. All right, so all the real numbers in between A and B. So all the real numbers such that this real number is greater than or equal to A. It may be equal to A, so A is included. And it may be equal to B, but it has to be less than or equal to. All right, so this is uh, what we call a closed interval. All right. Um, and we have an open interval. Closeness, openness, what does that mean? We, I mean, I will try to define them later. So this is, again, set of all real numbers such that this time the boundaries are not included. And so it is, in that sense, sort of open. So this is an open interval. All right. So as you notice, uh, my starting point is A is strictly less than B. So therefore, these um, uh, intervals are by definition non-empty. All right. Um, what else? Well, we have uh, what we call semi-open uh, uh, or semi-closed intervals. Uh, uh, one boundary is included, but the other one is not. So all the set of reals such that the lower bound here is not included, but the upper bound B is included. All right. So it's a semi open interval or semi closed interval. All right. You know, uh, glass half full, half empty. All right. So the set of natural numbers, uh, 
let me just keep writing here. So the set of natural numbers, again, it's not n exactly, but looks like n. So it starts with, um, some people include zero, some people don't. I'm gonna include it, so there's no end point. So this is the set of natural numbers. A uh, set of integers, usually denoted by z, kind of z. So it starts all the way from minus infinity, minus one, zero, plus one, all the way to positive infinity, all right? Um, so what else? The set of rationals, so I need a bit more space. So uh, it's kind of Q, not exactly though. So this set denotes the set of rationals. So here the definition is important. Well, first off, X has to be a, a, a rational number. So this is a set of reals. Right? So every rational number is a real number, therefore, such that uh, there exists some A and B in the set of integers where B is not equal to zero. So B is non-zero and x is equal to a divided by b. Close the parentheses. All right, so sorry, I didn't have enough space. Uh, so set of rationals, rational numbers, are those reals where I can write them as a ratio of two integers, a over b, where b has to be non-zero, all right? Um, so for example, if I have one over four, well, this is a rational number, all right? Here a is one, b is four. If I have two over eight, well, you know what? This is also rational. This is equivalent to one over four, but you don't have to worry about this. Um, so a, a, so so this is uh, A, this is B, all right? Uh, so some numbers you cannot write them, for example, pi. You cannot write them as A over B or square root of two. You cannot write it as A over B. And in fact, uh, if I have time, I'm going to prove that square root of two is not a rational number um, by using proof by contradiction, all right?